You're sitting here with me, and the clock is ticking. To put them to death for something that they know that they did not do. I got to fight to save my son's life. How are you telling your daughter, if you die today, I can never be more proud of you? We know for sure, 100% positive, that Rodney Reed murdered my sister. We did not believe that Jimmy, her fiance, had hurt Stacy at all. They cleared him. An insurance lady provided an affidavit saying that Jimmy Fennell says, if you ever cheat on me, I will kill you, and no one will ever know about it. What did the state completely get wrong as far as you're concerned about her death? Everything. Morning, investigators charged 29 year old Rodney Rodney Reed of Bastrop with capital murder in connection with the death of Stacy Stice. When it came out that the person arrested for Stacy's death was tied to DNA. The citizens of Bastrop County would believe that they actually caught the killer. Rodney Reed was charged with sexual assault, kidnapping, and murder of Stacy Stites. With those two enhancements of a kidnap and a rape, where it resulted in a death, it became a death penalty case. Rodney Reed, around that time frame, he was in his late 20s. He was fairly well known around town. In April of 96, he is doing some work at a Super S in Bastrop. Rodney's achievements in sports were phenomenal. He really excelled in boxing. He was a contender in the Golden Gloves. But Rodney Reed also was a free spirit. He had some run-ins with the law. He wasn't a choir boy. He had told me, my mom dating a girl, and she's engaged to a cop. And I had warned him, Rodney, you have too many irons in the fire, and you're going to get burned. He said that they had a relationship, a sensual relationship. There has never been any evidence whatsoever never. that there was any type of relationship. There's no notes, there's no there's letters, no phone records. No phone my son was arrested for the murder of Stacy Stites. I knew it was a lie instantly. I'm hurt to the core. And at the same time, I got to fight these people to save my son's life. I found a lawyer by the name of Jimmy Brown. He was a good lawyer. I went out to meet Rodney. I knew that he initially denied knowing Stacy, and I asked him about that. Rodney stated that he and Stacy were having sex. Stacy would pick him up at various locations, one being the HEB parking lot. It wasn't boyfriend, girlfriend, it was purely sexual. He was aware that she was dead and uh, that he was a black male having sex with a white girl in Bastra. He stated, you know, quite honestly, uh, that he was afraid. I did tell the family, you're going to need resources to get experts. Rodney Reed's family is not wealthy, and they're going to need at least $50,000 to retain an attorney. And very shortly, it becomes very obvious that the Reed family is not going to be able to raise the money. At that time, in January of 1998, the court appointed Calvin Garvey and Lydia Clay Jackson to represent Rodney Reed. The state had almost two years to investigate the case. We only had two months to prepare. We had numerous motions for continuance. The ruling was generally, I'll give you more funds, but never any more time. The trial of State of Texas versus Rodney Rodell Reed. It started May 4th, 1998. 
This is arguably the largest case that Bastrop had ever seen. Now, this trial has been front page news here in Bastrop. And a lot of the townspeople we discovered have already formed their own conclusions. At that time, a capital murder case in a small town like Bastrop was unusual. There was also the racial component to it. A African-American defendant, a white victim, and that raised the tension around that case in Bastrop. I have six sons. Uh, Rodney is my fourth son. I have faith in God this was too wrong. I have a God, and I'm believing in him, and I will hold on to my faith with God that he will bring my son home. I turned it over to God because it all works out in the end, and God's still in control. She had hopes and dreams, and um, he took that all away. In the opening statements, the prosecution made it clear that the DNA was really the heart of their case. The prosecution called the DNA Cinderella's slipper, and it only fits one person. This is DNA that was found inside of Stacy Stites that matches Rodney Reed. The defense told the jury that they were going to provide evidence that Rodney Reed and Stacy Stites had a relationship, and that would explain the DNA. In front of an all-white jury, Prosecutor Lisa Tanner began her opening arguments and laid out the narrative that the prosecution would go with the entire trial. That morning, Stacy Seitz got up at 3 or so. She left her apartment to go to a 3.30 a.m. shift at the HEB. Her normal route to work was on Highway 21 through Bastrop, where she would go through the railroad tracks going into Bastrop. And Rodney Reed either jumped in her truck or talked his way into her truck, much like what he did with Linda. We believe from there that Rodney Reed raped her and strangled her, and then dumped her body on the road, and then put her truck less than six-tenths of a mile from his home and walked home. Jimmy Fennell testified in the trial. He gave the timetable and the timeline of where they were, how much he loved his fiance, and that he didn't kill her. The state's key witnesses were Megan Clement and Dr. Bariardo. These individuals painted a damning picture for Mr. Reed. Dr. Bayardo took the stand and he opined on Stacy's time of death. And, and this time of death that he put was 3.30 in the morning. And this was devastating to Rodney's team because it put Stacy in Bastrop at the time of her death. It set the foundation for the fatal blow to be delivered. Their most powerful witness in the name of Megan Clements. Megan Clement was a serologist who tested vaginal samples from Stacy and she connected them with the DNA with Rodney Reed. What I was really waiting for was the testimony about this affair that they contended was happening between Rodney and Stacy. They had one witness who said someone matching Stacy's description came to Reed's house, but she got Stacy's name wrong. Other witnesses that we talked with, in large part, feared there would be retribution should they testify uh, on Rodney's behalf. I knew we were in trouble. Prosecutors are about to deal a devastating blow as they pile on evidence that will cripple Reed's case and his overwhelmed defense team. It is a free-for-all. Rodney's defense attorneys were scrambling to try to get their ducks in a row. The trial really seemed like the prosecution show. They had their DNA evidence. They brought out their specialists. The linchpin of the whole case for them was they had Rodney Reed's DNA inside Stacy Stites. The big weakness in the defense's case was after they told the jury they were going to show evidence of this affair, they weren't able to produce witnesses to testify about it. 
when the prosecution came over to the jury and said, the secret affair between Rodney Reed and Stacy Seitz was so secret that Stacy didn't even know it existed. I think that really sold the jury. After less than a day of deliberating, all of the 12 jurors came back unanimously and they decided that Rodney Reed was guilty of the capital murder of Stacy Stites. It was not an easy decision. It was very hard. It was a lot of pressure. We considered all the facts, and I believe that justice was done. The 12 white jurors, you know, this is something that you expect. Just like I said before, you know, I had built myself up already for this verdict that they were going to give. Since the jurors had found Rodney Reed guilty, now they have to determine what his punishment is for the crime of capital murder. And there's essentially a second trial. This second trial is to determine whether or not he is to be sentenced to death or spend his life in prison. During the punishment phase, the prosecution can bring up anything about your background, prior bad acts, accusations, things that haven't even been proved in court to try to convince the jury that you deserve death. The lawyers for the state bring in unadjudicated rape allegations that they say Rodney committed, but he was never charged with until after he is going on trial for Stacy's murder. But the defense said they didn't have time to investigate the claims of any of these witnesses. Among the witnesses who testified was Vivian Harbottle, who was raped six months before Stacy's murder in October of 1995 along the railroad tracks in the area. It was dark and I'd been drinking. And when the police wanted to show me a lineup, I said no, because I couldn't identify this person and I didn't want to pick the wrong person. I think it was like six months to a year until they uh, called me in to say that they had matched the DNA to Rodney Reed. I had no idea who Rodney Reed was. One of the other witnesses at the punishment phase was a young woman by the name of Angela Hamby. Angela Hamby was a 12-year-old girl that lived in Bastrop. Sometime in 89, in, in the first week of September 89, she was raped. That case went unsolved for years until the advancement of DNA and the DNA that was collected from Angela Hamby was cross-referenced with Rodney Reed's DNA, and it was a match. You also have the Linda Schluter case, where the states decided that all of these additional cases were committed by Rodney to bolster the notion that he had murdered and raped Stites. When you have witness after witness after witness coming and saying, the man who's seated next to you did these terrible things, taking a toll out of your client, who's told you that, no, he did not do that. Convicted murderer Rodney Reed is on death row in Huntsville. A judge formally sentenced him today for the murder of 19-year-old Stacy Stites. It's devastating news for one family. They got a captain murder out of the deal, and that's what they wanted. So much, so much. It's true too. News of justice and relief for another. I'm really glad that justice was served and that um, the system really does work. When he was sentenced to death, Deborah, did you have any doubt about whether this was the right person? We haven't had any doubt at all. No. We, we know for, for sure that 100% positive that Rodney Reed murdered my sister. I knew my son had been railroaded. For someone to put them to death for something that they know that they did not do. Once a defendant is sentenced to death in a capital murder case, the state will pay for all of his appeals up to his exoneration or execution. If you look at the entire universe of what has come up as evidence since Rodney's been convicted, you get a very disturbing picture. While Reed is appealing his death sentence, 
some startling claims emerge from a Texas Rangers investigation into Stacy Stites' former fiance, Officer Jimmy Fennell. I got raped by a car. Okay, I need you to call. Are you there with him? Rodney Reed has spent all this time on death row fighting for his life. But what's going on with Jimmy Fennell? Well, he's moved on to another police department up in Georgetown. It's north of Austin. In 2007, about 10 years after Stacey Stites' murder, it appears that her former fiance, Officer Jimmy Fennell, is under investigation by the Texas Rangers after a pretty disturbing incident. My name is Connie Lear, and Jimmy Fennell was the police officer who had taken me and raped me. October of 2007, Connie Lear is with her boyfriend at an apartment complex. So they've been drinking. They get into this sort of disagreement. There were some neighbors, and they call the cops. The cops showed up, one being Jimmy Fennell, Jr and separated us so that they could figure out what was going on. The police end up arresting her boyfriend. According to police reports, Sergeant Fennell ends up telling one of the other officers that he was gonna try and get intelligence from her. The only one that was still there was Fennell. We were alone. And that's when I was asking, you know, please take me to my boyfriend. So he took me over to the patrol car and he put me in the front seat. So we started driving. I started to realize that something was wrong when we pulled into a secluded park. And he came around to my side and told me to get out. And so I got out, and he took out his weapon, and he laid it in front of me. And then he slammed me up against the back of his patrol car. And then <clears throat> he jerked my pants down. <clears throat> and he raped me. And I didn't fight back because I was scared. And when he was done, he put me back in the patrol car, drove me back to the apartment complex, and he handed me a business card and told me that we were gonna do it again the next day. Connie ends up going to one of her neighbors and calls 911. Nine one one. What's the address for the emergency? I can't do that again. Okay. What what agency was the cop with? Was it Georgetown or? It was Williamson County, Georgetown, Texas. I don't want to come back here. Okay. We're gonna send somebody out to help you. Okay? I, I want to drive me off. It's gonna be a different officer to come talk to you. I want I'm on the phone with you. I'm not gonna hang up, okay? Only a couple of minutes went by and I noticed spotlights. I saw the patrol cars pulling in with no ambulance. And the closer they got, I realized that the first police officer in line was Jimmy Fennell. <laughs> According to what one of the other officers wrote in his report, Sergeant Fennell tells an officer she's claiming that I raped her. Connie says she was then placed in a police car and then forced to take back her claim that Fennell raped her. And I looked into the patrol camera and I said I made the whole incident up. And after I was done, he said, okay, well, you're under arrest for public intoxication. Put your hands behind your back. 
After Lear was taken to the Williamson County Jail, she called 911 and she got the attention of the Sheriff's Office and the Texas Rangers. A criminal investigation was opened that same day. Connie Lear was released from jail and taken to a hospital for treatment. The charge against her was dropped. A few days later, formal charges were filed against Jimmy Fennell. Jimmy Fennell Jr. now faces charges of sexual assault, kidnapping, improper sexual activity with a person in custody, and official oppression. You know, if he got convicted on all of those charges, Jimmy would face more than 99 years in prison. Instead, um, he pleaded guilty to one count of improper sexual relations with a person in custody and one count of kidnapping. He was sentenced to 10 years in prison. I mean, the bug shots of Jimmy Fennell make him look like a monster, but up close and personal, just a likable country boy, in no way am I denying that he committed a crime because there was misconduct that he admitted and took responsibility for. The DA never talked to me about plea agreements. That wasn't their choice to be made. That was mine. After Jimmy Fennell goes to prison, it's discovered that he was the subject of several internal affairs investigations that involved allegations of sexual assault and misconduct. According to police reports, he had this pattern of targeting certain women, and it seemed like he was really targeting women who were vulnerable, and he would use those as leverage to get them to do sexual acts with him. Jimmy Fennell's defense attorney, Robert Phillips, told ABC News that authorities apparently thought so little of these extraneous offenses that none of them were ever prosecuted, nor did these women ever testify in court. In Jimmy Fennell's case, he found the Lord after 10 years of hard time in a Texas prison, and he's trying to put the pieces together to create a new world for himself. Jimmy uh, was never gonna be police officer of the decade. This is a person that is supposed to protect you. There's no 10 year sentence that frees me of the things that he did to me. While Jimmy Fennell has done his time and is out on a new path as a free man, Rodney Reed is still on death row. Rodney Reed's death sentence is not the end of the story. It's actually the start of a new chapter when attorneys from the Innocence Project step in to unearth a new witness. She told me she was sleeping with a black guy and I remember being completely shocked. She and I both, you know, proceeded to say like, wow, you need to be careful with this. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Lord, I want to see you. I want to see you. See you high and lifted up to see you. Well, uh, I think it's pretty hard for an African-American man to be accused of raping and murdering a white woman in the state of Texas, be found guilty, and not receive the death penalty. We have an expression uh, among our colleagues in uh, you know, the innocence movement it doesn't take a village, it takes an army. How could you not be affected by a person on death row that you think the evidence shows by clear and convincing uh, proof is innocent, right? What I spend my time doing is calling individuals who may have information from that time back in 1996 who are willing to come forward. It's an enormous challenge. We are in a position now where 24 years later, we're having to go out and try to speak to people and ask them uh, about things they might have seen a quarter of a century ago. What I see when I am in Bastrop is a community that has progressed from that time back in 1996. I think the idea of an interracial relationship was something that was frowned upon in that community. I think that's changed. 
you might recall that the jury was not convinced that there was a relationship. This was a very damaging, even devastating part of his trial. Alicia Slater is a witness who worked at the HEB with Stacy, who has come forward talking about the relationship that existed between Rodney Reed and Stacy Stites. In 1995, Stacy and I worked together at HEB. She told me that she wasn't that excited to get married because she was sleeping with a black guy named Rodney. To hear that she was actually having an affair was shocking to begin with. She and I both, you know, proceeded to say like, wow, you need to be careful with this. Being an 18 year old about ready to graduate high school, I didn't want to get involved. In a 2016 filing, the state contends that her account is patently unbelievable and that she failed to mention the secret affair when she spoke to police at the time of the murder. If Rodney Reed did have a relationship with Stacy Stites, doesn't that complicate your case? Well, sure. However, it's awfully hard to find this evidence credible that he's, he miraculously has this secret affair with this girl and somehow his semen hangs around for several days. Which science says it can do. There are exceptions. There are no absolutes in science. That's why you look at all of the extraneous evidence as well in conjunction with just the DNA. When you look at the actual police reports of the investigation, there was a lot of mistakes early on. Um, one of the key mistakes from the first day, it is murder investigation 101 that you go to where the last person saw that victim. Why wouldn't they search Jimmy's apartment? I wish law enforcement would have searched the apartment. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that, no, eh, they it was OK. I mean, but I will tell you this. Um, I've been doing this a long time, and never once have I ever had a case where I didn't at some point say, gosh, I wish law enforcement would have done whatever it is, X. They were looking at Jimmy, but yet they turned his truck back over to him within a week after they had fully processed it. But if they're looking at him as a suspect, why would they turn his truck back over to him? Well, why wouldn't they? Forensically speaking, they did everything that was available to examine the truck forensically at the time. And so it, it wouldn't have made any sense for them to keep it. He needed wheels. One of the challenges that I've had specifically working on this case is getting witnesses to come forward the problem has been they're fearful. But we have nine new witnesses in this most recent appeal. One of those witnesses is an insurance lady. She's trying to encourage Stacy Stites to purchase some uh, insurance on her life. And Stacy sort of laughs and says, gosh, I'm so young, I, I have no need for insurance. And this insurance lady provided an affidavit saying that at that moment, before she can say anything more, Jimmy Fennell then says, if you ever cheat on me, I will kill you, and no one will ever know about it. One of the witnesses who has come forward is a gentleman named Charles Wayne Fletcher, the former member of the Bastrop County Sheriff's Office. In an affidavit, Fletcher recalls Jimmy Fennell saying, I believe she is sleeping with a black man. Keep in mind, the way that Mr. Fletcher tells the story, Jimmy Fennell does a racial slur and he didn't say the word sleeping. And every time a new person comes forward, it's more colorful and creative than the last. I keep waiting for Mother Teresa to be the next witness from beyond the grave. It's just nonsense. He's not guilty of murder, he didn't do it, and the evidence shows that. In its response, the state argues that neither witness is believable because they waited so long to come forward. What did the state completely get wrong as far as you're concerned about her death? Everything. They were like, oh my God, uh, this is way off. Rodney Reed has been on death row for more than 20 years. With just weeks to go before he was about to be executed, we traveled to Texas to hear 
his story. You're sitting here with me and the clock is ticking. Yes. You're set to be executed. Bryce Benjet and this whole team of lawyers have been working on this case and struggling so hard for so many years. So one day I get a call from Detective Sergeant Gannon and he had been looking at this independently and he says, I found something new and you guys got to hear about it. This homicide detective pointed out what he thought was obvious. That was a big deal. Detective Gannon. So Detective Sergeant Gannon. Nice to uh, see you. You're, you're former NYPD. Bronx well, homicide, right? Yeah. The state's case essentially was that she was intercepted on her way to work, that she was raped, and that she was strangled. What did the state completely get wrong as far as you're concerned about her death? Everything. We're like, oh my God, this is way off. What was way off? Time of death was, was way off. It was, it was hours earlier. But I give a lot of credit to Kevin Gannon because he did point to the key scientific evidence that really showed that they were all wrong. And then when we take this to the actual medical examiner who testified, he gives us a sworn statement that said, nobody should have relied on what I said. Here's what the medical examiner wrote. My estimate of time of death was only an estimate and should not have been used at trial as an accurate statement of when Ms. Stites died. And it's one of the great things about the system. In a way, you can go back to court, not as easily as it should be. If you can get the proof, you should be able to get an exoneration. Family and supporters of Rodney Reed gathered in the Bastrop County courtroom today. Rodney Reed's defense attorneys are trying to include forensic evidence from that 1996 murder that they say will prove his innocence. Michael Baden, B-A-V-E-N. Dr. Baden has weighed in on some of the biggest cases from O.J. Simpson to George Floyd. Reed's defense team brings him in to talk about the timing of Stacy's death using the science of lividity. The lividity is because of the settling of the red blood cells in a down position. After about four, five, six hours, the lividity stays, and that's called fixed lividity. In this instance, there was fixed lividity in the front of her body. Not on her back, as her body was discovered. That means that Stacy Stites was dead in a different position four or more hours prior to the time of that 3 to 5 a.m. window in order to get that way. All that shows that this homicide occurred hours before 3 a.m. at a time that she was just with Jimmy. Now, he mentioned that there was other factors. Yes, there was another, which is called classic sign of death, rigor mortis, which you, uh, stiffening of the body. After somebody is dies, it begins to set in where the body stiffens and contracts. And that process begins uh, and goes through a period of about 12 hours and then begins to slacken. We have videotape of the body of Stacy Stites being examined, manipulated, and put into a body bag. That video shows that she can be put into that body bag and her arms folded. The rigor mortis was present but leaving the body. So this would put it about 20 hours, something like that, uh, of death where the rigor has come, stayed, and then started going away. And that is very powerful scientific evidence that, again, the time of death is way before that 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. window of the prosecution's case. If she's killed at midnight and not 3 a.m., then Rodney Reed is excluded as the killer. So according to the defense's legal filings, the perpetrator then becomes Jimmy Finnell because he said he was in the apartment with her that night. No, not based on any of the credible evidence or physical evidence or forensic evidence it's a concoction of creative brilliant lawyers trying to save a condemned 
man. And the state argues that none of these methods establishing the time of death are totally reliable or have pinpoint accuracy. And Dr. Baden agrees. I agree with that, yes. That concludes the hearing. I agree with that, yes. That concludes the hearing. The judge says the new evidence is not compelling enough for a retrial. The judge said he rejected Baden's testimony because it would not necessarily have changed the opinion of the jury and that other evidence of Reed's guilt was strong. The court went on to say that Dr. Baden never examined the body and that he based his opinion on crime scene reports, videos, and photos. In the meantime, another court has set an execution date for Rodney Reed. A state judge granted prosecutors' request to set Reed's execution for November 20th. At this point, there is outrage all over the country about this execution. The national media has gotten involved. And in the middle of this outcry, I travel to Texas and sit down with Reed on death row. You're sitting here with me, and the clock is ticking. Yes. You set to be executed? I hope not, but yes. I am holding on, not just for myself, but for my family. The jury believed that you killed Stacy Stites. Did you rape Stacy Stites? No, I didn't. Did you kill Stacy no, Stites? I absolutely did not. How would you describe your relationship with her? Were you in love with her? I couldn't say that I was in love with her. We were both in relationships. I was seeing someone else. She was seeing someone else. So it was a casual, it was casual. sexual relationship? Yes, that's all. If I wouldn't have known her, if I wouldn't have been associated with her, I wouldn't be in this situation. But this is the situation that was handed to me. I have to accept that I'm here now for something that I didn't do. Earlier this week, attorneys for Reed sent a new letter to the governor to ask for a delay in the execution. What's on the line is pretty much everything. We had unprecedented support from really all over the world. Kim Kardashian West asked Rodney, is there anything that I can do to be helpful to this case? Yeah. Something's off here. Something needs to be done. Free Rodney Reed! Free Rodney Reed! Free Rodney Reed! Free Rodney Reed! No! Free Rodney Reed! Free Rodney Reed! They've held dozens of rallies and protests. We had unprecedented support. I don't know if it's social media coverage or media coverage, but just the closer we got, the louder the noise. A rally outside the Texas governor's mansion. Yeah. Something's off here. Something needs to be done. Breaking news this afternoon, Rodney Reed will not be executed next week. An indefinite stay of execution. A victory for death row inmate Rodney Reed in the fight to clear his name. The hearing coming up keeps on getting postponed because of COVID-19. The one thing I'm very confident about is that the more you look at it and the more you look at the forensic pathology and the science, it's clear and convincing evidence of innocence. Do I think Rodney Reed killed Stacey Stites? Yes. I do think that in our criminal justice system is not a perfect system, and that's one reason why I'm not a, a, a proponent of the death penalty. There is room for error. I have no doubt about his guilt. I have tried and tried to figure out somehow that Rodney Reed didn't kill Stacey Stites. I can't get there. And I've also tried to figure out how Jimmy, her fiance, could have done it, and I also can't get there. I have a son, a son's life to save. And that's what I'm trying to do. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm going to do until I, until I leave. I have to hold on to my faith and stand on this truth and the facts and thank the world. I thank the world for the support. I have so much support. And God knows I thank the whole, the whole world. But leave me alone with my pain. And what do you say to people who say that this case may be a miscarriage of justice? I find that people that have not heard all of the evidence. What upsets you most? <laughs> Trying to defend my sister. And the, the lies told about her. 
While Carol's daughter was a teen mom, she made a tough decision to give up her baby girl for adoption. Stacy Stice's child is now a 26-year-old mom of two. My oldest is Stacy Lee. She's named after Stacy. I wanted her legacy to live on. She has grandchildren that she never will get to meet. The only reason I'm doing this right now is I think we really have a shot of getting this across that Stacy was human and all she wanted to do is get married and have a baby.